This half of Spurs basketball is made possible by Bud Light. The difference is drinkability. By Sprite. Drink Sprite for instant refreshment. By AT&T. See what's new from the new AT&T. Visit at and for details. By Dodge. Bigger in Texas, better in a Dodge. Grab life at your Texas Dodge dealer today. By HEB. Here, everything's better. And by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. Byron Scott, the reigning NBA Coach of the Year, after taking his Hornets to the Western Conference battle against the Spurs last year and winning 56 games. This year they enter at 28 and 15 tonight off a loss to the Warriors last night, 91-87 in New Orleans. And here's the Southwest Airlines starting lineup. Pedro Stojakovic, David West, Hilton Armstrong in place of the injured Tyson Chandler, Rasul Butler, and your Western Conference All-Star starting point guard, Chris Paul. And of course, Greg Popovich with the Spurs, as the Spurs get their home finale before an eight-game rodeo road trip. And they come in at 31 and 14, an impressive win against the Phoenix Suns on Thursday when Tony Parker and Tim Duncan combined for 46. Our Southwest Airlines starting lineup with one change, Kurt Thomas getting the call in place of Matt Bonner, along with Michael Finley, Roger Mason, and Tim and Tony. Bill and Sean Elliott, Joe Ryan go with you on Ken's 5 and HD tonight. And partner Sean, how about those Jeep keys to victory? Uh, I had a, about a dozen tonight, but we have to... We don't have enough time to go through all of them. How about Chris Paul, especially in transition? Watch the turnovers. Again, that's one and two, Chris Paul. He's extremely good with his hands. It's probably the most impressive part of his game to be. And watch the spies. You have so many guys over there in Hornets uniforms that used to wear Spurs uniforms. And you even look in the background, there's Paul Pressey. I mean, yeah. they're all over the place there. Yeah, you got Sean Marks and Devin Brown and Antonio Daniels, Anthony Tolliver. And, yeah, what is it? Jeff McDonald in the Express News today referred to him as the uh, Spurnets. Because, uh, <laughs> and then, of course, Paul Pressey and Melvin Eli. And, okay, all of those players, with the exception of Tolliver, got a championship ring. Sure. And whether they contributed a whole lot or not. Yeah, you, you're, you're exactly right, and you have to figure that those guys know everything that Good we job. do and are going to be prepared. Spurs have uh, recalled Malik Hairston from the Austin Toros, and Hairston was having a great stay there. 23 games, 21 points, 5 boards, 4 assists. He is active uh, tonight in uniform. And the other news with the Spurs is Jan Mahimi, and you've all been wondering, when is this guy coming back? Well, not for another 6 to 10 weeks. And actually, it's good news, Sean, because he finally underwent ankle surgery, and now there is a chance to have a full recovery. Really feel for the young man who put yeah. a lot of hard work and just was never right. Uh, it's kind of a, you know, it's almost a lost season for him because you know, here he had an opportunity where he could have gone through training camp, uh, and he's really a, a good young player that has athletic ability, shot blocking ability, can rebound the basketball. You figure that he's going to get a solid year next to Timmy. We wish him the speedy recovery and hopefully be back for the ball club soon. All right, let's take a look here. This is Santa Rosa with our referees, Tom Washington, Mark Davis, and Mark Lindsay calling the shots tonight as the Spurs and the Hornets get ready to hook up. The Spurs, last year, they split the regular season 2-2 before the Spurs won in the Western Conference semis 4-3. And the Spurs earlier this season lost 90 to 83 in New Orleans. That was December 17th in a game that they lose by seven. It came down to the fourth quarter. The Spurs went ice cold in that contest. And you might recall they had a back to back where they went to Orlando after that and were beaten by the Magic. And then they started recovering and it played great since. That was just a bad road trip there. I mean, the way it was scheduled, it was a trap. Chris Paul gets the opening bucket of the game. Paul averaging 21 points, leading the league in steals and assists. 11 assists per game and nearly three steals per contest. And a foul here on Michael Finley. Uh, that's a questionable one early on. Michael Finley trying to set a back screen for Tim Duncan. But you talk about Chris Paul, he's averaging 11 assists a game. The next closest player on the Hornets ball club is less than two assists a game. 
If you talk about the entire year, and I know Antonio Daniels has come over from the Washington Wizards, but other than that, they don't have any other playmakers. Yeah, Daniels has really become a valuable part of their club as Butler with the miss and Duncan with the rebound. Here comes Tony against Paul to the hoop. Count it. Both point guards open the score. How about both those guys getting clever with each other? I mean, Chris Paul jumping on Tony's left hand trying to take that ball away and Chris Paul coming right back. How good is Hilton Armstrong? Good enough to catch and dunk. And that's, yeah, that's what all. Tyson Chandler has uh, gotten his contract for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, right. I'm telling you, you're playing with Chris Paul. Just, just pull up to the table and put your bib on. He's going to feed you. Third year out of UConn. Tony with a miss here and Butler with a rebound. That is no knock any of those players. They're both five players, obviously, but Chris Paul literally makes it so easy for you. Yes, he does. Looks here for the back door and Stojakovic finds him. Finley on him. Now out of Butler. Never panics with the basketball. Looks like he's in jail that time. Great bounce pass to Stojakovic along the baseline. Peja, fade away, banker won't go. Tony. Oh, he got right by Chris Paul. And then got collided with Thomas. And missed the layup. That ran to his own man. Butler got his own and hits this one. Oh, they should score there. It's five on three. Now, Thomas and Tony colliding. Kurt getting the start. We don't want him to start taking charges on his own team. Right? <laughs> and he's out there for defensive purposes. He's out there to stop David West to get physical with him. Foul called here, and it's on Armstrong. Tim will go to the free throw line. Duncan to the free throw line where Tim on the year shooting 69% coming off a 20 and 15 rebound game against Phoenix had four assists. Let's take a look at Kurt Thomas here. Oh, Tony's just shocked that this lane opens up so much and that's a charge. Well, David West got away with a bit of a shove. I mean, yeah. Kurt Thomas was trying to stay out of the way. As Duncan gets both free throws and it's 6-4. Chris Paul with 9.28 to go first quarter. Good help by the big fella from there, behind. There he is once again. Just outstanding timing with Kurt Thomas. And you watch how high he gets off the floor. How about not very? <laughs> and he's still able to get that block. The inbounds nearly lost. Paul finally gets it after one between the legs of Armstrong. Chris Paul with the bucket. I think this runs so many screen and rolls with him that you have to have a ton of help from your big men. There's no way one single guard can cover Chris Paul when he's getting all those screens. All with 30 double doubles, five triple doubles this season. And almost a quadruple double a few games ago against Philadelphia. Inside, and Finley and Duncan misconnect. It leads to a Butler dunk, the assist from Paul, and it's 10 4. Do we have to go back to Keys of Victory? Transition, and Chris Paul. You saw all three of those right there. So Paul comes out with four points and a couple of assists, and the Spurs are trailing. Spurs basketball will continue after these messages from Southwest Airlines. Yeah, after the turnover, Chris Paul in the open court. There's none better. He's going to get fancy with the basketball. You see the results. 10-4, New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans with a 10-4 lead against the Spurs here. Let's join our third member of the crew, Joe Reinigel. Joe? Yeah, that's right, Bill. And of course, it's a very important game for the Spurs because it's the last home game here for a long, long time. The rodeo road trip will embark after this ball game. And of course, that seems to be always where the Spurs pull themselves together. But check this out. Eight cities in 19 days, over 10,000 miles, six games versus the East, two games versus the West, three games with plus 500 teams. And well, they always have a good record, as we mentioned. 35 and 13 overall during rodeo road trips and I don't know what it is Sean and Bill but it's something about that rodeo road trip that always seems to get this team ready for a playoff run. 
Well, let's hope it's the case again, Joe, because uh, the timing is always just about right. Near that all-star break, team is settled in, and right now, knock on wood, a pretty healthy ball club as well. Yeah, because you come together, and then you have really a month and a half before the playoffs begin, so it is perfect timing. Duncan with a jumper, won't go. Stojakovic with a rebound. Peja with the rebound, averaging just under four a game. The Spurs just one of four in the early shooting. The Hornets are five of ten. They've won the rebound battle as well, and Butler with the jumper here. Rasul Butler averages nine and a half points a game. No double figures the last two games, but a dangerous shooter at 42% from the arc. Spurs trail by eight. Mason can't hit the three. Rebound to West. Trying to make Butler work out there. Roger Mason last time had to go around two screens to try to contest the shot by Rasul Butler. Paul, oh, just blew the wide open layup. Did all the hard part. Couldn't take care of business then. Tony. Thomas, great hustle for the rebound. I curtain this time that one because he easily could have laid it up. Tony <laughs> gets a second shot at it. Sticking it right at Stojakovic and West there. Two big guys have no chance of stopping Tony. And it's 12-6 now. Well, where was Chris Paul in that play? He must have been late getting back. Tony Parker was able to work twice against the bigs. Mana Ginobili waiting to check in for the Spurs as West steps out, can't hit the jumper, rebound to Finley. West in his comeback game was just 5 of 16 against the Warriors last night. Did have 15 boards though to go with his 12 points. Well, that last shot by David West is why Kurt Thomas is out there. Kurt Thomas forces David West far out on the floor, out of his comfort zone. Makes him take an 18, 19 foot jump shot instead of his 12, 14 footer who's able to dance it on the floor. Manu Ginobili enters, gets a good round of applause, set a franchise record in the Phoenix game. 18 of 18 in free throw shooting on a 30 point night, his season best scoring effort. How about that? Gets and nine boards. Got a chance to get some rhythm. Finley. Michael, nice elevation for the open jumper. Spurs back within four now. I like Finley attacking. He's paid to Stoyakovic as well. Got to keep the defense honest. Later on in the game, Tim Duncan will be allowed to work. Paul ran into a roadblock. And then Thomas, oh, with a terrific block, but got somebody and a foul is called. And he had to hit him down low because the block itself was clean. Here it is. And yeah, Michael Finley stepping in there, and I don't see the contact. Let me get a better angle of it. Armstrong, 67% free throw shooter, misses the first. Here it is, Michael Finley, his presence alone. Oh, there you see a little, little body contact, and really, <laughs> Kirk Thomas clobbered that shot. You get that much ball, you ought to be able to have a little body. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, the contact wasn't enough to throw Armstrong off. There's no question about it. The block was still good. 13-8. Hornets by five now as Armstrong, one of two. He's averaging four points, couple boards a game. Is up to, to six and three in place of Chandler. Duncan. Boy, he had him deep. Just couldn't yeah, finish. Did. He's kicking himself for missing that one. But later on in the ball game, there's no way the Hornets are going to be able to survive guarding Tim Duncan one-on-one -on -one and a low block. Offensive this time. And Armstrong called for the foul, his second. Sean Marks, former Spur, will check in. There you see Armstrong at the top of your screen trying to set a screen on Tony Parker. And I don't know what happened there. It looks like Tony started to fall down, took Armstrong with him. Armstrong out, Sean Marks in. And man, one of those spies is in here, Sean. Oh, yeah. I don't know if all his spies are going to be good enough, though. Spurs brought Bonner in for Thomas a moment ago as well. That's just two tough angles. Timmy's taking off the glass there on those jump hooks. Chris Paul forcing the action and getting the call against Tony. First foul on Tony Parker. Parker named as an all-star reserve. He'll get his third all-star shot. Tony at 20 points, five boards, four assists in the first meeting between these two when the Spurs lost in New Orleans. Paul with the miss. Hey, if you're looking for a Valentine's gift that lasts longer than one day and costs one low price, Spurs have got a sweetheart deal for you. Three games for $119, and you receive a Spurs hat or an I Love My Spurs t-shirt 
with each plan purchase. Two sweet plans to choose from. One includes the Lakers, the other the Cavs. Give them a call, 444-5050. Or, of course, online at Spurs.com. Deadline is February 13th. Parker batted away, goes to Bonner. Nice fake, got by West. Right in the face of Sean Marks. A uh, three-point game opens up that drive. There's no question about it. The Hornets have scouted him. They're going to run out to Matt Bonner on the three-point line. If he puts the ball on the floor, he can go all the way to the basket. Bonner hit that career-best six threes against Utah. Just had three points against Phoenix. West counters here. And 16 to 10 now as David West, another all-star, comes in on the year average at just under 20 points, seven boards a game. Finley, no hesitation, got it for three! It's outstanding ball movement, it is set up by the cut from Matt Bonner. But Chris Paul's out of control. And the referee agrees with you. Offensive foul on Chris Paul, his first. And that should have been a second. Because the foul that was called on Tony previously could have easily been called a charge. Boy, it's got to be tough to ref these two guys. Well, he's just forcing the action right here. That's an easy one. He's got a full head of steam. Tony Parker's waiting on him. Tony. You're exactly right. It's got to be extremely difficult. What a nightmare. Look at this. Parker lost it, got it back, and then muscled it up and over Sean Marks. Paul the other way. No rebound. Duncan. Outlet Parker. Paul's still in his fanny. Tony sees West. And now we'll wait for Tim Duncan. Tells Matt Bonner to clear. Manu Ginobili the fake. All the way. <laughs> Has Russell Butler not seen that ball fake? I mean, how many players in the league go for that fake every time? So Manu, season high 30 the other night, gets his first bucket here. Spurs on top now, 17-16, six on the shot clock. Oh, Three. Man. Butler. Oh, and man. a foul. Offensive foul on Rasul Butler just got totally frustrated. And what did we talk about early on? When you talk about assists, there aren't any other playmakers out there on the floor. So if Chris Paul doesn't have the ball in his hands, guess what happens to the New Orleans Hornets offense? It just goes right in the tank. Exactly right. You have a charge there with the shot clock running down. No one is able to make plays. Butler's first foul comes out of the ball game. James Posey comes on. Posey, a key pickup off of last year's Celtic title team. And defensive three seconds is the call on the Hornets here. It's on David West to his disagreement. Iron Scott looks on. Well, what a job he's done. Talk about deserving of being NBA coach of the year. Not just so much for last year, but with the tumultuous move of going to Oklahoma City and then back to right. New Orleans and in that time frame they won 18 games in 38 39 and 56 last year yeah, un unbelievable job there's just no continuity for a while there Spurs make it 18 16 on the free throw Ginobili kicks to Finley another three yes Michael Finley ran hot to start this one tonight and the former Badger of Wisconsin makes it 21 16 the Spurs 11 straight. Spurs look sharp right now, Bill. They're moving the basketball. They're playing defense. They're blocking shots. They're taking care of the basketball. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. They know there it is for a tough one tonight. Look at the beautiful so fake by Monica Dobie. Then another one freezes Dojakovic. Sean Marks not big enough. Monica Dobie taking it between three Hornets players, making it look easy. 11-0 run by the Spurs. They're up a nickel with 3.24 to go in the first. And Michael Finley, red hot. Welcome back, Spurs by five. Part of the reason Michael Finley, three of three from the arc. He's got eight points. Sean will show you how he got a couple. Oh, you're going to watch this action right here. Monte Ginobili coming off the screen. Tim Duncan's going to give him the basketball. You see Michael Finley getting in position. And Chris Paul is the man along the baseline. And right here, you freeze it. Chris Paul, he's in position. That's exactly where you want the defender to cover the baseline. But Monte Ginobili's pass, just too tricky. Chris Paul can't get a hand on it. 
And pretty good defense by the Hornets as far as covering the baseline, being in position where you're supposed to be. But Manu Ginobili just too good on that play. And a point away from getting his average already with 3.22 to go first quarter. Spurs 21-16, 11 straight for the Spurs, 17-4 Spurs since the timeout at 7.25. West goes to work, kick out, Stojakovic. Manu jumps at him, he settles for the two and swishes it. Pages Stojakovic is number eight all time in made threes with 1,521. He's seven away from catching Nick Van Exel. That's a ton of threes. Oh, I mean. Here is Manu. Ten on the shot clock against Sean Marks. Rebound, Duncan as Posey cleared him out. And I mean cleared him out. Pop would have liked the whistle to have been blown there. Yeah, I think he expressed himself to the official. Very clearly. Yeah. Posey with a miss the other way as the ball refused to give in to his evil deed. <laughs> Manu with a three. Oh, baby. Manu Ginobili answers at the Spurs. Pump it up now at 24-18. Be more and more confident with every minute that he's out there on the court. I wouldn't be surprised to see Manu Ginobili have a gigantic rodeo road trip. David West against Bonner. Tim comes to help. Fade away by West. No rebound, Ginobili. Here comes Manu in the Spurs. Two minute mark in the first. Up a half dozen. Back to Tim. And now Manu. To the rack. Oh, he just missed with a spin. Marks comes up with it to Chris Paul. Not enough Spanish on that shot. Need a little bit more spin to get that one in. Posey finds West. Step back over Tim. Rebound Finley. And the Hornets are 8 of 19, 42%. Spurs are 500 right now. They're 50%, 9 of 18. Spurs coming in 7th in the league in field goal percentage at 46%. Tony to Tim, off his arm to Manu, right back to Duncan. Well, Manu Ginobili just in the right place at the right time there, able to make a play. Tony trying to find Tim flash to the basket, still works out for the Spurs. So Manu, six points, a rebound, two assists in his six minutes. Instant action and productivity from Manu Ginobili. Inside a minute to go. Paul with the clock at seven on the shot. Three. Sean Marks for two. Rebound to Duncan. Uh-oh, watch out. Tony against Sean. <laughs> That's just big man abuse. There's nothing Sean Marks could do. Might as well have had a lead jacket on. 28-18. And the jumper by Chris Paul. Quiets him down a bit. Spurs still by eight. You know, the one thing, there have no, been no alley hoops. Some of that is Chandler. Armstrong is not that kind of player. He's also got a couple fouls, but Spurs have really done a great job at taking that away so far. Yeah, well, you don't have to worry about Chris Paul throwing the ball over the top of you to Tyson Chandler for easy buckets. You can focus more of your energy on Chris Paul. Parker had it wrestle away. Chris Paul to answer the other way, right in the face of Bonner. No, Tim couldn't find the handle. And the bucket is good at the buzzer by David West. A tough finish after an incredible run by the Spurs that had put them up 10. Uh, they were in danger of really blowing the game wide open early on here. Hornets making some plays down the stretch, but still, I like the way the guys in white look tonight. The Spurs and Parker and Paul going head to head. 28-22, exciting action in this first quarter. Spurs by six. This half of Spurs basketball is made possible by Gulf State Toyota. Toyota, moving forward by Brake Check. For over 40 years, we've been servicing the cars and trucks of Texas. At Brake Check, we do it right at the right price. And by Pizza Hut. Get pizza, pasta, and wings from Pizza Hut now. To start the second quarter play, the Spurs with a six-point lead, 28 to 22. What a finish to that first quarter. The Spurs look like a different team after that timeout. Let's go to the Valero first quarter recap, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Field goals, well, it's the New Orleans Hornets 10 of 23, the Spurs 11 of 20. Spurs in that quarter on a 16 to 6 scoring run, and it was all sparked by Michael Finley. Three of three from the field, the guy looking good. Guys, give Pop a little bit of
of credit after that timeout. The Spurs look like a different ball club. John, what does he say to those guys? Uh, he gets all fiery and red, and he says whatever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> He's the head coach. It worked. And Manu still smoking as Ginobili drains the three. He's got nine, and the Spurs a 27-10 run since that timeout, and the Spurs now lead at 31-22. What do we talk about all the time, Bill? The best way to get your rhythm is going to the free throw line. Manu Ginobili getting 18 free shots the other night. That'll definitely get you in rhythm. Posey, second attempt. Yeah, and it actually, if you want to go back, started in Utah. Remember that fourth quarter? I think he yeah. ended up with 12 points, and maybe 10 yeah. of them were at the free throw Absolutely. line. Helped seal that game because Ginobili, in the last two games, has hit 29 of 30 free throws. And how about Bruce Bowen's free throws the other night also? I kept telling my wife, I said, you know what? They're going to foul him again. He's going to make the next two. You know, he doesn't miss them because he's getting a lot. He's missing them or his percentage is down because he only shoots six or seven or eight or however many he had for the whole year. Antonio Daniels trying to make something happen. And George Hill using those long arms. It's not surprising that they get tangled up. Yeah, the Bapa Bowen tactic did not work yeah. to Terry Porter. Shame on him, <laughs> a one-time spur. Well, he tried. Business. You know, the one point that was made as Daniels hits the free throw here that we've talked about before when the Spurs have done it against Shaq and, and occasionally some others, is that even if you make them, it takes the rest of the team right. entirely out of an offensive rhythm. So right. depending on how the game's going, it's a, people may not like it, but it's a pretty good tactic. Well, for certain guys, and for, for Shaq, it's a good tactic because Shaq, he's shot a ton of free throws over the years. I mean, he's got to be one of the all-time leaders in attempts because he gets fouled so much. But Bruce Bowen's a different animal altogether. He's getting six, eight in half a season. You give him six in a game consecutively, he's going to get a rhythm. He's going to knock him down. Yeah, too good a shooter not to. See that by his three-point percentage at 45%. Hornets right back in it now, down five. Here's Devin Brown, another one of the former Spurs. Said, boy, it was great to sleep in his own bed last night as he came back here. Of course, high school days and the college star UTSA. And the turnover gets it right back to the Spurs. And substitution coming on as Michael Finley checked back in. Substitution for the Spurs. Michael Finley! Replacing George Hill, Finn, red hot first quarter for Michael Finley. On eight points, three of three shooting, including a pair from the arc and three rebounds. Roger Mason, one of the point right now to Manu. Daniels trying to cover him. Finley. Spurs back up eight. That's just an outstanding pass and play by Manu Ginobili once again, finding Michael Finley along the baseline. That's twice here early on. You had a defender that time a foot or two out of position, allowing Manu to make that pass along the baseline. Daniels here from Posey. Off on the shot. Ginobili snares the rebound. Pushing it again. Mason. Finley. Open. on the defensive end of the floor. You better get back. Michael Finley, Roger Mason, terrific teamwork. And throw Monty Ginobili in there, making a beautiful cross-court pass. Roger, making, Roger Mason making the extra pass to Finley in the corner. First basketball will continue after these messages from Southwest Airlines, Finley on fire. Spurs by 11, their biggest lead of the night. Finley, five of five, including three of three, or the four of four from the three-point line. And how about Tony Parker against Sean Marks? Just unfair. I thought Mannequin was a movie. <laughs> I mean, he just goes right around Sean Marks in the open court. And you can see it coming here. And at this point, Sean Marks is dead to water. I mean, there's no way, as a big man, you can backpedal trying to stop Tony Parker. Your best move is to turn around, sprint to the paint area, and then meet him when he comes into you. But the back pedal, you're just asking for trouble. Well, and the Spurs tonight, eight assists. Tony's got two of them. The Hornets, three. All of them Chris Paul. Yeah, absolutely. The point you were making earlier, Sean, that the playmaking 
when he's not on. And that's no knock on Antonio Daniels. Just they don't have a lot of other folks that can dish. Boy, terrific move that time by Devin Brown to get the bucket. Devin comes in averaging five and a half a game. His season best was two games ago with 18 against Denver. Now you know he wants to play well. No questions coming back here, but you're exactly right about Chris Paul getting back to that. It's not a knock against the other players. I mean, they're complimentary players, and they're very good at finishing off plays, but they're not the type of players to put the ball on the floor, get in the paint, suck in the defense, find somebody wide open on the perimeter. And the Spurs, on the other hand, as Devin Brown hits a jumper here at two, He's such a great job. Michael Finley's the hot guy. Well, Manu fed him one as soon as he came back in the game, and then they found him again on the break. Pop not liking the defense on Devin Brown, and a timeout will be called here. Make sure they get that fixed. A 20-second timeout with 8.37 to go in the half. Hey, folks, as the Spurs continue on in the second half, there are opportunities to get free tickets. We got one way for you, and you have a little fun looking for a new vehicle. Test drive any new Kia at a participating Greater San Antonio Kia retailer. You'll get a voucher for two tickets to an upcoming Spurs home game while supplies last. For information, log on to Spurs.com. The keyword is Kia. Michael Finley is in his first four shots from the arc tonight. Finn coming in at 38%. Missed all four against Phoenix. Yeah, but he's getting some good looks tonight. He's taking advantage. Extra pass there. Monty Ginobili slipping along the baseline. Whips that pass to Finley. And Michael just getting spoon-fed here. Another terrific pass by Manu. A cross-court pass. Roger, Macon, Roger Mason able to make the extra pass. You have to love that teamwork and really the understanding, knowing who has the hot hand. Mason's miss. Julian Wright's rebound. Former KU standout, University of Kansas and Lawrence says he got the care of there. Here is Marks with Bonner on him, and now Brown with Finley trying to contain him. And Devin, nice job of getting the ball to the hot man, and he's aggressively going to the basket and will be rewarded with a couple of free throws. Well, guys like Devin Brown, they're the X factor because he wants to come back and play well in front of his friends against his, one of his former teams, and he has the ability. Devin Brown. Bonner with the foul. Yeah, Devin, the Spurs, Denver, then the Spurs for two years, and Utah, the Hornets in Cleveland. 37-30. But this means more to him than playing against any of those other teams. Oh, yeah. Devin with the last five in the game for New Orleans. And... You know, the other thing, the Spurs done a nice job of pushing it tonight, knowing that, yes, the Hornets are on the tip back end of a back-to-back. -back. They had a late game last night that didn't start until 9.30 in New Orleans. Got in here around 2.30 when they checked into the hotel. And they're not altogether healthy. Right. I mean, you mentioned, uh, and you wonder with West, who's had ongoing problems with the back before he did miss those five games, how he reacts to a back-to-back. -back. Sure. And especially when you have Kurt Thomas leaning on him. He reports back in now, David West does. As Bruce Bowen to win bounce. Out to Finley. Thomas, Mason, and Bonner, the rest of the Spurs lineup. Four on the clock. Finn going to have to fire here. No problem. How hot is he? Michael Finley with a two, and it's 39 31. All right, now that man has it going on. You've got to do whatever you can to get him the basketball, preferably some wide open looks, set some screens for him so he doesn't have to create like he did last time. Right now, Michael Finley's shouldering the load. Frostbank showing you with the hustle stats, the rebounding edge to New Orleans, but the Spurs shooting 52% and hadn't mattered. And now a travel by Devin Brown. But how about that defense? You don't give up a wide open shot. Instead, you make him put the ball on the floor and the turnover. Look at Michael Finley, beautiful ball pick. David West stays in that play and is there to contest the shot, but to no avail. Roger Mason knocks down the jumper. Spurs by double digits again as Mason Hits the bucket for his first two of the night. Bruce Bowen goes to work on Devin Brown. Here is Daniels. Daniels and Roger Mason were talking before the game. They both, of course, played with the Washington Wizards before. You think they are happy with their new locations? <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the Wizards' record this year. They are woeful. Inside, the lefty hook won't go for right. Bonner. Here comes Roger. Kurt Thomas and Matt Bonner teaming up. Puts David West on the glass. Foul on Kurt Thomas as 
The screen on Antonio Daniel. That's where you miss the point guard right there because Matt Bonner trails the break like he does so often. And you see him right here. He was wide open to start that play. Kurt, his glance kind of gives you what he thought of that call. Yeah, he looked like he was stationary. Hornets, by the way, have played 11 players. Is Byron Scott well aware that last night it was not an easy game against Golden State? You know how Nelly and those Warriors like to run. What was weird about that is who'd have thought that the Warriors shooting 41% would win in New Orleans? Devin Brown Devin with a bucket here for three and a timeout spurt. The pop is not liking Devin Brown right now. Devin Brown's come out here trying to burn his former team. Get too many wide open looks, and that previous timeout was called because Devin Brown rattled off five straight points. Here he is once again wide open on the perimeter. A little too much breathing room the way he's shooting the ball. He's got their last eight. Seven points for his lead. Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Monaco in the Spurs Center. Coming up on the Toyota Halftime Report, in case you missed it earlier this week, Spurs Chairman and CEO Peter Holt talked with Sean Elliott, made a major announcement concerning season tickets and playoff tickets. Mr. Holt will explain on the Toyota Halftime Report. Now, game night continues. Back to the AT&T Center, Joe, Sean, and Bill. Here with the Spurs leading up by 741-34. Want to remind you folks, Whataburger is trying to take care of you after each victory that's televised on My35 or Ken's. Look for the bring home the W to scroll across the screen with a promotional code. Log on to Spurs.com and enter the promotional code for your chance to win Whataburger and Spurs tickets. A couple of other good games going on tonight, uh, Sean. The Mavericks are playing the Heat, winning 69-56 in Miami. That's mid-third. The Lakers are in Memphis, and the Grizzlies in the Battle of the Gasols are winning 61-55 at the half. Keep an eye on those for you. Uh, the Grizzlies scoring 61 at half tells me the Lakers aren't ready to play. Foul here is called on Posey. Your Arizona man, uh, Jet Terry, had a nice quote. Did you see that about uh, Dallas, of course, pointing for Miami since they, they felt they gave away that championship series yeah, a couple years ago. Yeah, they did give it away. And Jason Terry said, you know, I got a ring. He said, but unfortunately, it's just my wedding ring. <laughs> he said, I felt like I should have had another one. Oh, there's no question they should have won that series. Mason with a jumper, and the foul is called here. Well, Rogers smartly, wisely gives the ball off to Tim Duncan. Timmy able to use that reverse pivot and knock off Butler. He's behind the play the entire time. Posey picks up two quick fouls and the Spurs and Roger Mason Jr. to the free throw line. Roger, 45.5% from the arc, fourth in the NBA at the moment. He's made 97 threes coming in and he's an 87% free throw shooter. Roger hit a pair of threes in the Phoenix victory, had a dozen points. Back-to-back double-figure games again for him. And the Spurs lead at 43-34 here. He's just been so consistent this year, Roger Mason. And when you need him, he's there, scoring 18, 22, knocking down big shots to win ball games. West against Duncan, gave up the dribble, now out to Butler, four on the clock. Mason dogging him. Butler, no. Timmy with a rebound. Duncan, four points, five rebounds tonight. Spurs are just playing some outstanding defense. Staying in front of their men, not going for too many fakes. Sticking to the game plan. Tim finds Bruce. Oh, he missed oh. all for the reverse. And left hand with a little rye on him. Devin Brown, finally a miss. And the loose one, Tony Parker. Tried to go inside to Tim, deflects off of one of the Hornets and right to Posey. Looked like he was off somebody's noggin. West. That's a slow reaction there by the guys in white. Yep, David, David West has Bruce Bowen on his back in the low block. You've got to come with a double team immediately. 43-36 with 4.45 to go, first half action. Well, if David West is out on the perimeter guarding Bruce Bowen, it's a different story altogether. Roger Mason can knock down the three, the rebound off to Posey. And the Hornets coming right back, and they got Paul getting ready to check in. Manu Ginobili will come back for the Spurs. 4.27 remaining, and David West with a miss, rebound off to Bowen. And West does look a little rusty, he's three of eight tonight, five rebounds. 
I did expect him to be a little rusty. Missed some five games, then coming back just last night. Still doesn't have his game legs underneath him. Tim oh. can't get this one to go. Well, West, we know he has been a spur killer. Last year, 23 and 7 is what he averaged in the regular season. It's been almost unstoppable. Yeah. Both teams a little cool here the last couple of trips, and Tony goes well, to the bench for a call. The pace hasn't been cool, though. They've been going up and down, up and down. Both teams just missing easy shots. Parker on the drive to Duncan. Seven on the shot clock. Finley off the bounce for three. Much more difficult shot than just catching and shooting. Michael, six of seven tonight. His first miss and his first miss from three of four of five. Spurs last field goal nearly four minutes ago. Spurs get another turnover. Parker. And he takes care of that little drop. Parker's given so much size when you look at the guys that he's going up against. West and Butler. And Tony still manages to get that shot to go. Timeout called by New Orleans. A 20-second timeout with 3.08 to go in the half. And the Spurs with a 45-36 lead over the Hornets. Oh, uh, the turnover of Tony Parker in the open court. How are you going to stop this play? Butler, Posey, David West, all the vicinity. Tony Parker just cutting them up in the open court. Tony coming off back-to-back -back games of 26 against Phoenix, 24 against Utah. And strong start tonight for Parker with 10 points now. This year, for every fast break point the Spurs score, break check will donate $20 to the Boys and Girls Club of San Antonio. Break check, Texas fans. And we owned and operated since 1968. Log on to BreakCheck.com today. Spurs break the huddle. Ginobu, Bowen, Duncan, Mason, and Parker. The other way it is Stoyakovich, Paul, West, as well as Posey and Butler. Stoyakovic, nine on the shot clock. They want to go to Posey, trying to post up Bino. Now, Asia misses. Oh, the follow up dunk. The third dunk of the night for the Hornets. They've had no alley oops, but Butler. Little exclamation mark on that finish. Yeah, that was 45 38. That was shocking. You know, he came out of nowhere. It looked like Timmy had that rebound secured. Bino, short of the shot. Stoyakovich with a rebound and gives off to Chris Paul. Paul, a little hesitation. Wow, great move by Chris great. Paul. Uh, he catches Tony Parker waiting for Tim Duncan. Gives you that little hesitation, that old Steve Smith head fake where he acts like he's going to spin back with the basketball and then just continues going toward the bucket. Steve 40. Smith used to have this, the craziest move that way. Used it for so many years to beat defenders. See guys ripping that move off. Mason on the drive. No, Roger got his own. Reset on the shot clock. Manu kicks to Tony. Runs into the double team. They chase him here. Parker again. Paul there. Mason. Manu. They got a piece of that. The ball movement's not good right now. Everybody's catching it, trying to make a move themselves. Ball's not flowing very well. Chris Paul right back to David West, a wide open jumper. Well, his first fortunate there. He's going to make those. Yeah, he time. is. He's deadly. West, 47% shooter. Here is Manu. 116 to go in the half. Spurs would like to finish with a little flourish here. Four on the clock. Mason with Stoyakovich on him. The floater for Roger. And a foul. That's his Roger making lemonade right there. And really, just really has nowhere to go. And I'd like to see Tim Duncan hold that ball a little bit more in the low block. Looks like they're just faking with the, the double team. They're not really committing to a true double team. Stoyakovic, 47-42 as Peja with the basket here. He's got four tonight. They have no many double figures yet. Paul leads it with nine. Butler has eight. The Spurs. Michael Finley has been the man with 16 points. Parker also in double figures with 10 and Ginobili 9. Chance for the Spurs to close out here in style. 
Go two for one, score twice, get a stop. Tony Great finds pass. Bowen. Yeah, that was beautiful. Bruce rims it. Manu finding, falling, got the board. In trouble, intercepted, and finally Posey to be thrown out of bounds. Manu's got it. <laughs> With a fresh 20 seconds to go, shot clock turned off. Manu looks at the official like, I wasn't fouled. Uh, if he passes to anybody else, he's absolutely insane right now. After that effort, go ahead and shoot whatever ball you want. Kicks it out, and it was touched by the Hornets. He didn't listen to you. 5.4 to go. You put that type of work in, that type of effort, hitting the floor, sacrificing your body, going to get it back. No one's going to say a word to you if you jack up a half-court shot. Look at Manu Ginobili, hitting the floor, uses his right foot as his pivot, keeps it, and then look at this, give me my ball back. And a technical call, I think, as well. We'll sort it out when we come back. We're out of here, Chuck. All right, Posey got hit with a T during that timeout, and we'll take a look at what brought all this on, as Manu Ginobili certainly thought he got fouled in this mess. Uh, Manu just outstanding effort, hustle there. Comes up with the basketball, hits the floor. I don't know what Chris Paul is yelling about. I think he's looking for a travel. And then you see Manu sticking his hand in there, taking that ball away once again. I think Posey's complaint was after Manu, and this is what brought the T, Manu got him with a bit of an elbow. And then when Manu stole the ball back, I think Posey felt he was fouled. Yeah. So. Well, there was some meat slapping for sure. I mean, on that, that takeaway by Manu Ginobili. Roger Mason gets the tee, though, and hits the free throw. And Mason now with seven, and the Spurs will inbounds with 5.4. Chris Paul still pleading his case. They get to give the ball to Tony. Well, Manu got some arm, but when he clean is, uh, when a steal is that clean, all right, there's Manu Ginobili. You're not going to have that foul call. Manu, the man of the moment. Parker with a steal. He nearly had a half quarter. Ah, oh, it's got to make Tony feel good to pick the pocket of <laughs> CP3. So he doesn't do a little ma last second magic. What a half as the Spurs by eight coming up on the Toyota Halftime Report. Andrew Monaco will be aboard and a feature on the Spurs season ticket freeze. Never a better time to get involved with Spurs basketball than now. That'll be next on the Toyota Halftime Report. Spurs 50, Hornets 42 at the break here on Ken's 5. This half of Spurs basketball is made possible by Valero, the all-American gasoline all across America. By your Texas Ford dealers, official sponsors of the San Antonio Spurs. Ford is the best in Texas. By Frost. Frost, banking, investments, insurance. By Whataburger just like you like it. And by the Wellmaker Law Firm. If you or a loved one has been injured because of the fault of another, call the Wellmaker Law Firm for a free consultation at 828-6033. Remember, choose well, choose Wellmaker. Spurs by eight, 50-42. We're ready for the start of the second half. Before we get to that, let's check in with Joe Reinigle and an update from the coaches. Coaches were very happy about the way the defense changed a little bit after that early timeout when the Hornets got off to a very good start. They said that was the biggest difference. That and obviously Michael Finley making a few three-pointers, that didn't hurt. As for the second half, what they would like to do is get Tim Duncan a little more involved. Only four points for Timmy in that first half. They want to get him involved. They say they hope the uh, shots will continue to fall. And of course, the defense, they say, can get better, guys. So we'll watch for that. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, Tim just won a five from the floor. Uh, that is kind of the good news, bad news, though. And here they go, right inside to Tim. And he says, there you go. Oh, he got some shots early on in the ball game, some point Blake shots, and he just missed them. It wasn't like they were trying to freeze him out of the ball game. That time he gets probably his toughest shot of the night to go. Spurs start the second half the way they started the game. Thomas in place of Bonner getting the start tonight. Using the defensive ability against David West and pretty successful. Tony Parker nearly swipes it from Chris Paul and a foul is called on Tony. Our McDonald's highlights Manu Ginobili right in the middle of it all. Oh, he just did everything. Beautiful ball fake, two ball fakes there. Going between three defenders, knocking down the three ball. And just outstanding effort and hustle. A couple big steals and assisted Michael Finley on his three-point shots also. 
Nice pass by Chris Paul to Hilton Armstrong to get the bucket. Pulls him back with an eight. Mino Ginobili had 11 points, three rebounds, three assists in his first half of play. As the Spurs come right back to score here, Tony Parker not happy that he didn't get a call there or else he's still barking about the last one. And he almost broke the cardinal rule. He's almost faked back door and stopped. Tim Duncan threw it over the ear of Chris Paul. And Tony Parker continues to the basket. Chris Paul, kick out here. Butler, no. Rebound, Finley. Mike, a big first half. Now his fifth rebound to go along with 16 points. He's just absolutely phenomenal. Knocking down shots. Bailing the Spurs out on a couple of key possessions. Being a chance for a season high in a couple categories if he continues along the statistical line. Timmy hits the jumper. That's a great read there by Timmy. Fakes the bounce pass. To Tony Parker streaking to the basket, that's enough to freeze his man who wants to help out on that play. Creates enough separation, he can get a shot off. Now Tim's got eight and six boards. Chris Paul looking to West. Nine on the clock. Foul on Kurt Thomas. That's okay. That's what Kurt's there for. He's there to get physical with West, push him off the block. If he gets you in a bad way, go ahead and wrap him up. David West, his sixth year in the league, got a Xavier from Ohio, 28 years old, all-star last year, preserved this year. Paul in the lane, and bodies sprawling, and Chris gets the bucket anyway. These two guys like playing against each other, I and mean, they're just competing at such a high level. Well, it was funny to see them before the game. that They've become pretty decent friends, I think. Oh, yeah. Laughing, good conversation well before the game, and you're thinking, bingo will be that way in about an hour. Tony from Tim Duncan. How about that? Tony Parker continues to get that backdoor play on guards and try to get aggressive with them. They start overplaying plays. Tim Duncan puts the pass on the money, and that's an offensive foul. Yep, and they caught it. He delivered with the shoulder and the elbow, and Chris Paul called for the foul. Uh, Tony Parker working along the baseline. He's in jail there. Fake out toward the wing, go baseline. Chris Paul loses sight of the basketball. Right here, Tim Duncan puts the bounce pass right on the money. Second foul on Chris Paul now. You only have a handful of big men that have ever played this game that can make passes like Timmy can. And Tony heating up. He's now got 16 with another bucket there. And the Spurs, 60-46, their biggest lead of the night. And he's keeping Chris Paul honest. There's no way that he can be allowed to roam around off of Tony. West hits the jumper. It'll count and a foul on Thomas for knocking down Chris Paul. His uh, fourth foul. Uh, Kurt Thomas trying to get through that screen and just runs right over the little guy. And that's an and one. Uh, Chris Paul does a great job selling that foul. Fourth foul on Kurt, so frustrated. He'll take a seat because even though he hasn't scored tonight, he's got a couple of rebounds and done a nice job of just keeping West uncomfortable. Yeah, exactly right. David West with six points at the half, and we're talking about, again, an all-star who's been a handful for this ball club over the years. Bonner, let's fly. Bingo! The three from Matt Bonner. So Matt Second of the league at 47.8. Knocks this one down. And that'll make David West work. He's got to come out in the perimeter to guard a guy like Matt Bonner. West against Parker. Kick out Paul. Bonner tries to recover. Not in time as Chris Paul, 34% three-point shooter, hits his 32nd three of the season. Well, that's great execution there by the Hornets. David West comes off a screen, gets all the way in the paint area. Matt Bonner desperately trying to get back in front of him. Doesn't want Tony to get caught on West in the paint. And West throws it back out to Chris Paul. Mason misses. Paul with a rebound. 63-52. Spurs by 11. 7.57 to go in the third quarter. West against Bonner. Duncan. Lock and a takeaway. And then Paul gets it right back. Tim deflects it. And here comes Roger Mason Jr. The Spurs got away with one there. Parker just does rattle out. Chris Paul quickly back the other way. 
flop by Paul with a no call right in front of the <laughs> official. It's about all you can call it. Goodness. The ball boys are going to have their hands full tonight, cleaning up all the sweat off the floor. Stojakovic, the miss, hard rebound, deflects off of Mason, and it'll be New Orleans basketball. Byron Scott looking on, knows a little bit about winning. First took New Jersey to the finals twice. Part of those Laker championship teams in his 14 years in the NBA as a player. 7.05 to go here in the third. His club down 11. Armstrong wheels on Tim. The lefty shot. And then oh, that's the got to be offensive goaltending. That ball well, certainly appeared to be within the cylinder. Well, that's not a hard call to make. The ball is clearly still on the rim. The officials giving the Schultze I know nothing <laughs> look on their face as Bonner gives it back to Tim Duncan. And a foul here, and an one for Timmy. Oh, Timmy getting it right back, but you watch here, Armstrong making a play here. And this ball is in the oh, cylinder. Geez. That's offensive goaltending. Cannot touch the ball. And there, Timmy Duncan gets a little pat on the arm, gets that one to fall. Tim's in double figures now, misses on the free throw. 10 points, 7 rebounds. Manu will check in in a moment. Spurs by 11. Paul in the paint. Looking for Armstrong. He missed that one. And he wanted a call. All right now the Hornets, they've lost their composure. They haven't gotten a few calls. They're, and they're all complaining. Armstrong's complaining. He thought he got bumped by Tony Parker on that. How you? Watch Tony Parker getting back in the play. And Armstrong to me looks like he just missed it. He's upset about it. David West is yelling at the officials. And David West then hit with a technical foul. So Mason at the free throw line. Watch West. see David West right there. Coming back down the floor. He's upset. He's not even in that play. But, you know, that's been the problem with the Hornets in years past. They're a young ball club. They're fiery. Give them credit. They're passionate. They play hard. But they can lose their cool. Mason on the drive, kicks off to Timmy. Roger Mason. Bonner couldn't come up with it. Here's Armstrong, and Paul will bring it quickly back. Butler got by Mason. Out of bounds. You know, last year, remember, Sean, New Orleans won here last year, and a lot of the folks with the New Orleans broadcast crew were saying that they felt that was a signature win. It was right before the Spurs won the rodeo road trip. Same right. time of year. And they felt they finally beat the big boys yeah. and that really kind of catapulted that team to a terrific season. Well, that wasn't really a win. That was a wipeout. Yeah. I mean, to do it in the Spurs house, they say that they really think that was one game that did mean a little bit more than another. But tonight, they have kind of reverted back, even though they're a little shorthanded, emotionally to the old Hornets. Uh, I agree. They've, got, they've turned it back a few years maturity-wise, and they're letting the officials get in their heads. Spurs basketball will continue after these messages from Southwest Airlines. Sixty-six-fifty-four. Spurs lead it by twelve. Hey, folks, one in six children in the U.S. are at risk of hunger. With your help, we can feed millions of children. What you can do to help out is text the word "share." to 20222 on your mobile device to make a $5 donation to share our strength. AT&T will match donations up to $100,000 regardless of your wireless carrier. Standard messaging, the rates may apply. Roger Mason, a word from Pop before he re-enters. Bill and Sean Elliott, Joe Reinigo with you. An update from Memphis. The Lakers have got a little room now. They're up 10 in that game in the second half. But Andrew Bynum has left with a sprained knee. They did some x-rays, say it's negative. So see how long he's gone. You know, Bynum is coming off uh, just a huge game the other night where a big double-double and the Lakers win against Minnesota at 27 and 15 boards. West. West playing very well. West makes it 66-56. A little miscommunication there between the weak side help. Hilton Armstrong was had the ball in the low block against Tim Duncan. 
You don't worry about him, you worry about the off guys. Manu with a miss, rebound to Stojakovic. Spurs with Parker, Mason, Bonner, Duncan, and Manu Ginobili. West on the drive, a step back over Bonner, and David West trying to get it going now with a couple of buckets. Cuts into that Spurs lead, single digit now at eight. When he gets some rhythm and he gets the ball 12 feet away from the basket, look out. There aren't a lot of players that can stop him. He's got 12 and six boards. Bonner knocks down the two. And that's what you do with West right there. He's guarding Matt Bonner. You make him work on the defensive end of the floor. Don't give him a night off on one side. Yeah, it's kind of the Spurs counterpunch after Kurt Thomas got his fourth foul. You put Bonner to go to work offensively. He does a great job here of holding Mason away, or the West away, so Mason comes up with a loose one. 4.45 remaining in the third. Spurs by 10. Roger Mason to Bonner against Stojakovic down to Timmy. Against Armstrong. Ball deflected and a foul is called on Tim Duncan. He and Chris Paul looking at one another, the former Wake Forest guys. And I don't know what Chris Paul's talking about. He just got the call. Uh, Timmy's upset because West hits him on his elbow right there. <laughs> Tim catches, catches Chris Paul. This game's getting zany right now. Look at Chris Paul. Tim's going. Yeah, I know that's a foul. Chris Paul wanting a technical on Tim <laughs> as well, maybe. Yeah. Tim's Ever. like, hey, I'm allowed a freebie. We're both team and deacons. I, you know what's gonna, yeah, I, I tell you what's happening right now. The next time out, Pac is going to address his guys and say, quit worrying about the officials. Yep. And right here, West hits Timmy on his arm. Tim's upset that he doesn't get the foul call. Stays back there. Chris Paul, look, he's flopping like a fish. But Pop is going to tell his guys for sure, don't worry about the officials. They're not going to make every call. Don't go to the hole expecting to get anything out there. Just go out there and play. They've already gotten into the head of the Hornets. Don't sure. follow their lead. The Manu, follow that baby! And one by Ginobili! <laughs> Good call, ref! <laughs> Wow! Oh man, Will Armstrong just getting up close and personal with Manu Ginobili. Oh! Smell that aftershave. He's got some underarm deodorant that you're familiar with. It's called Slam. Manu with a night in the Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> and the Spurs get it back. Mason! Two from Roger Mason! Play score Bonkers! Spurs 73-59! That's what losing your composure does to you. You start making middle mistakes. West the miss, Parker the rebound. And Tony bringing it back quickly. Manu Ginobili fakes oh. with a three. Mason, don't do that to him. Oh, oh, Roger, we <laughs> couldn't have handled a hip slap. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> but try us anyway. Well, that would've been something else. These fans would've gone absolutely unglued. David West against Timmy. The reverse, nice move by West to get the bucket. The quiet folks down for a moment. He's so good around the basket. Well, forget about that. What about what the Spurs are doing on the offensive end of the floor? Manu Ginobili with the big dunk, Roger with the big steal. Crowds into this one. Remember, Armstrong's got four fouls. Here is Mason trying to make the best of a broken play. Bonner, he does! The three from the Red Rocket! It's your timeout, Hornets! Get back in your house! Center. Crazy. Uh, Roger Mason after the three-point play by Monte Ginobili. David West just throws that ball away. That's like a, it's like a drill for Roger. Step into the pass. A broken play, Matt Bonner. I'll take this wide open three ball. No chance to hit the rim. Seventy-six, sixty-one. Spurs biggest lead of fifteen. Monte Ginobili in your living room. Just so filthy. 
are just nasty to throw those ones at. There's nothing you can do about it. Hey, you took a step, you chopped your feet, you were getting ready for the big block, and you came out on the bottom end, Manu Ginobili, putting that all in the face of Hill Armstrong. Manu, one of six Spurs in double figures now, and Bonner's got eight in the quarter. Here is West with it for the Hornets. Hill with a rebound. Back down to Tim Duncan. Duncan was six in the quarter. Mason to Manu. Fakes on the three. Paul. Fade away. Manu Ginobili. Rebound comes off to Posey. I like the first one better. Had a wide open three ball. Passed it up. 2.24 to go in the third quarter. Spurs 76-61. Chris Paul. Spinning on George Hill and then the floater. Wow. <laughs> I mean, George Hill recovered nicely. Yeah. And flew past Chris Paul in the air. Chris Paul coming in and averaging 21 a game. Manu on the drive and the foul. Blocking call. Chris Paul just got a technical foul for giving his commentary on that decision. Well, the officials are so far in the Hornets' heads right now, they can't even focus. And you can see right there, Armstrong is in the restricted area. That's a, that's a block every day. He's upset about it. He was turned sideways on top of that. Wasn't really sacrificing his body. At the line, the tee, Mason misses there as Chris Paul getting the technical foul. Paul... 18 points tonight, and Chris. Oh, we saw Chris Paul get a technical in this building when he wasn't even playing. Right. When he was sitting on the bench. He's an unbelievable player, probably a better person than he is player from yep. all I've heard and, and the people that know him so well. Gives so much back to the community. Great young man, just a terrific talent. But it does get a little old, the constant barking. Well, the competitive nature you love, but at one point, particularly in a game like this, this game isn't over. No, it's not. But it's part, it's part of the maturity process is what it is, really. And these guys are going to have to learn that, you know, you can't be affected by those other three guys out there on the court. You've got to go out there and play no matter what. There have been plenty of games this year and throughout the years where the Spurs weren't getting the calls, even on the road, and they managed to pull the ball game out. And you know, the point is, as Paul gets that bucket, he may come back and just play terrific, but how does he lead his teammates? How do they react to that? They may not be talented enough to be able to uh, bark absolutely. and scream and still play great. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Some guys can do that, and they elevate their games, and some guys go south. Stojakovic with the foul. Spurs with Bonner, Mason Hill, Fabrizio Alberto, and Manu Ginobili lead it by 13. 135 to go in the third. Manu spinning back in the paint. Kicks out to Mason. A little bit off the mark. Now Roger to Bonner. Six on the clock. Mason going to have to make something happen. Oh, he was out of bounds. Out of Spurs bounds. turn it over. Now Paige Stojakovic come all the way back to inbound it. Sean Marks on the floor for the Hornets, along with Posey, West, and Chris Paul. A little raggedy possession that time. Spurs have to close out this third quarter in style. Don't allow the Hornets to get any confidence going into the fourth. The HUD hustle stat showing the rebounding edge for the Hornets as Paul knocks down a three here. And I mentioned he is not done. And it's 78-68. Spurs 15-point lead just like that trimmed to 10 with now one minute to go in the third quarter. Paul with 23 points. And Manu Ginobili's got to touch the ball here. Offensive foul, Fabrizio Alberto on the screen. I see everybody else is throwing the ball around. Even that last possession when Roger Mason stepped out of bounds, Manu Ginobili didn't have a hand in that possession. You see Chris Paul looks like he gets hit by a truck. And Manu Ginobili's got to touch the ball especially when you don't have Tony or Tim out there on the floor. Paul, another three, got it. So he draws the foul at one end, comes back to hit the three, and all that Spurs energy and building that 15-point lead has drained quickly. It's a seven-point game now. Exactly. Ginobili to the hole, 
Got it. I need a lot more of that. This is exactly how you don't want to end a quarter. Giving up a 16-point lead. The Hornets are going to gain some confidence coming into the fourth. Chris Paul letting the ball roll up the floor as he scored the last eight in the game for New Orleans. George Hill comes out on him, and Paul down low. Nothing. Out of bounds. Spurs basketball. Hold it here. Give it to Monte Ginobili. Let him run the clock down. Take the last shot of the quarter. And hopefully get a double-digit lead back for the start of the fourth as Ginobili walks it up. Two-second differential, game clock and shot clock. Manu being patient. Got Posey out on him. Bonner, Mason, and Hill set for three-point shots. Manu, oh, right out of bounds with six seconds to go. Oh, way too much time for the Hornets and Chris Paul. Got to get a shot up that possession. Chris Paul the six then red hot another three in trouble West against Bonner that was after the clock Spurs do come back with a nice stop defensively Bonner upset with himself for the miscue at the other end but overall the Spurs lead it by nine 80 71 despite 17 from Chris Paul in the quarter the Spurs by nine Manu just terrific this half of Spurs basketball is made possible by Valero, the all-American gasoline all across America. By Frost, Frost, banking, investments, insurance. By Whataburger, just like you like it. 80 to 71 as we head into the final quarter and when a game like this guys what else can you do but sit here and sit back as a fan and enjoy this this is a great basketball game let's take a look at the Valero third quarter recap if we can very quickly and the big news was Chris Paul 17 out there 29 points guys Chris Paul was responsible for 59 points total in that quarter uh, sit back and relax because it's going to be a dandy coming down the stretch all right thank you Joe let's hope the Spurs you get a little run early here and get some separation. Well, they got to take care of the basketball and exploit. Ginobili, the contact and the foul will go I to the line. Armando just got crushed that time, but they've got to take care of the basketball here and try oh, to no problem, build no this problem. lead I tried to get somehow out as quick as I could. with Tim Duncan on the bench. Manu to the line as Marks picks up the foul. And Manu Ginobili knocks down the free throw Ginobili in that third quarter had seven points and Manu now with 19 on the night three rebounds three assists in just under well now 20 minutes talking about productivity Manu Ginobili taking care of it here 82 71 the only thing he's done wrong all night is throw that ball out of bounds Paul's had the hot hand and he hits another three Chris Paul understand he's made coming in 31 threes and shoots 34 percent and Chris Paul he's hit three in about the last seven minutes oh, he's got a lot of time to size up those shots Bonner to Fab the reverse wow. great work by the Spurs big man an empty pass there Chris Paul is all over that play misses the pass from Bonner to Fab Fab's first bucket of the night see pop right now Yo and the Fab, get out there on that screen and roll. Don't allow Chris Paul to size up the three-point shot. They double him, they chase him, he gives up the dribble. West. Manu with a steal. He's got Hill. Georgie. Got it. <laughs> that was awfully close to being an and one. Chris Paul bumped George Hill in the air. And I thought George Hill just might do a little top shelf. <laughs> I was about you to never say. know. Well, he did the right thing on that play. Instead of trying to pass it back to Manu Ginobili, with a guy like Chris Paul playing that middle position in the two-on-one, you really got to make him stop you. Antonio Daniels strong to the rack. And pulls it back within 10, 86-76. Daniels averaging four a game in his 22 games with New Orleans since coming over in the trade that was involving Mike James of Washington. Manu misses the three, and Daniels with a rebound. Chris Paul with 11 since he got the technical foul. He's hit three threes. Daniels from Paul here. 12 on the clock. 
Chris Paul, the pick and roll with Marks. So Back. A terrific job by Fab there on that high screen and roll. Paul, got it again. George Hill all over him. There's not yeah. much more no. you can do in that case. There's absolutely nothing you can do there. All right, Pop's calling a timeout just so Chris Paul could cool down a little bit. Probably saying, now I wish he was going to just shove it. Make sure he had three free throws. I'm telling you, he's back on his heels here. George Hill is in his jersey. Spurs basketball will continue after these messages from Southwest Airlines. Chris Paul has single-handedly brought the Hornets right back in the thick of it within seven. Paul with 14 since those technicals with 2.02 to go in the third quarter. Uh, he's having a monster game here, just making it from everywhere. Three balls, he has 32 points in this ball game. You can see a tremendous ball handler hanging in the air. That's over the top of George Hill with those long arms. George hit him once again. And he's chest to chest almost with him, but Chris Paul still able to raise up and knock down a long three ball. I'm sorry, I would never criticize Byron Scott. I don't take a guy out who's five of five from three as Finley hits the jumper. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. I'm not resting him until he misses a shot. When he hit that last shot, I'm just saying, stay out there. Yeah, and you know what? He's a guard. Guards, they can go all day. Leave him out there. He's matched his career best with five made threes. I mean, he's the guy right now that's carrying your ball club. Inside, they get the deuce here. 88-81 is Devin Brown. Had that big first half, and now Brown with double figures, 10 on the night. Oh, if you replace him with Devin Brown, that's a different story. The way he's been playing. Yeah. And Michael Finley, who tore him up with 16 in the first half, bounces back and knocks down the jumper, 90-81, and Finn's got 20 on eight of nine shooting. David West against Bonner, no to Posey. David West, Posey the push off, and they caught him. Loose ball foul. Third foul on James Posey. Spurs by nine with the basketball. Matt Bonner is working awfully hard against West. West trying to catch it in his comfort zone. Matt doing whatever he can to push him off the block, trying to keep him out of his range. Foul called here on Devin Brown. Mata Ginobili comes out, Roger Mason back in. Brown picks up his first foul. Manu takes a seat with 20. He's continued that red hot free throw swing. Yeah. Was he 29 of 30 in the last two coming in? Six of six tonight. I'm telling you, I, I, Bill, I'd be shocked if Manu doesn't have a big road trip. He is poised for it, that is for sure. Finley to Duncan against Sean Marks. Back out Tony on the drive. Now with seven on the clock. Timmy in the lane. Yep. Yeah. Like a repeat of practice several years ago. Timmy over the top of Sean Marks. First team against second team. And Sean spent three years here. One year he just didn't play. He had two seasons of 25-24 games. Spurs get it right back after the miss as Parker brings it down up by 11. 7.35 to go. I tell you where else they miss Chris Paul here is with his defense. Tremendous defender, doesn't get nearly enough credit. But like you said, leads the league in steals. Tony knocks down the jumper over Sean Marks. Spurs by 13. Yeah, and he gets credit for the steals, but not his overall defense Absolutely. sometimes, I think. Because you get nervous out there if you're a wing player or, or a big guy, you got to make a pass out there on the court. You know that Chris Paul is somewhere out there lurking. Creates a lot of havoc. Daniels nearly lost the handle, now in the paint. Sean Marks with a follow dunk. Oh, showing everybody what he can do. Pretty good play there by the big fella. Five sneaking points. In there, able to sneak in there behind Tim Duncan. Timmy's out there trying to block the shot by Daniels. Marks averaging 2.6 and 2.8 boards. Finley with a rare miss tonight. Finn, 8 of 10. Also six rebounds for Michael. West, now to Daniels. Hornets are shooting 51%, Spurs 54% tonight. Red hot shooting as Posey with a miss and Mason with a rebound. 
Baze, Popsay, let's go. Want to push it. Go, Spurs, go! Duncan to Bonner. Matt got the jumper for three. Matt Bonner has owned the second half as Bonner with 13. And if you're by what's gone right now, it's about time to bring back Chris Paul. That's an honor. Five of five and three of three from the yard. Oh, he's been sensational. Devin Brown tosses it up. West recovers it. Posey. Finley the run at him. And the three. Misses. New shot clock. David West with the ball back out to Daniels. All this time running off the clock is to the Spurs' advantage with Chris Paul sitting on the bench at a 14-point lead. Ten on the shot clock for Daniels. Posey, five on the clock. Here is West. Three. No tip. Yes. I mean, when you have that crew out there for the Hornets, and David West catches the basketball, gets Matt Bonner 12 feet away from the basket, you've got to hit him. You've got to come immediately. Don't let him get in the lane and make something happen. The other guys out there, as you can clearly see, are having trouble making plays. West with 16 points on 8 of 21 shooting. Tony, eight on the clock. Parker over West. Rebound comes off to Posey. Antonio Daniels with it out front again. Inside, Mason scoops up for the steal. Here come the Spurs. Roger against Daniels. Batted out of bounds. That's not goaltending. Spurs are asking, getting no response. Timeout called Spurs 97-85's first basketball will continue after these messages from Valero. <laughs> Welcome back, 97-85. One of our associate producers, Nathan Betts, got his family, grandparents in town. Enjoying the game here. And uh, they don't get it as good as we got it because we've got him working in the truck with his magic on the video <laughs> replays. Hey, the Spurs, you, you might have heard, have had a freeze on season tickets for next year. They're also giving you a great break on playoff Spurs tickets this year. Peter Holt explained if you come in immediately, there's even an added bonus. If you'll sign up, renew before March 13th, or come in uh, for new season tickets and you want playoff tickets, and you do all that before March 13th, you won't have to pay for your playoffs until after each playoff series. And that really will save a lot of money uh, uh, versus having to come up with all the money up front for your playoffs and you used, to, you used to have to come up with all the money for your season tickets for next year. Yeah, that's right. And so that's where people were saying, we need some help. Sean, you had the chance to sit down with Peter, the Spurs owner, and one of the things the Spurs do so well and they've done NBA surveys on it, is they answer their fans' needs in whatever it might be, and they're leading the way in this category, Absolutely. too. Absolutely, fan accessibility. They're always number one or number two in all of professional sports. Spurs ball. And it just shows, that, again, that they're in tune with what's going on. They're trying to help their season ticket holders. And, you know, without our season ticket holder base, we wouldn't be competitive. We wouldn't have the championships. They've allowed us to remain competitive in one of the smallest markets in this league. Spurs on the inbounds, 14 on the shot clock. Tony Parker got the jumper. The battle between Parker and Paul continues. Paul with 32, five boards, four assists. Tony Parker with 20 points, three rebounds, and seven assists. As you look at the forward, score by quarter. Oh, Chris Paul is forced to do more. He has to score more because he doesn't have nearly the weapons right now. With Tyson Chandler out, a lot of the focus is going to be on him. He's forced to score the basketball. And he got it again there for 34 on the night for Chris Paul. Here is Parker on the drive, pushes back. He's got Hilton Armstrong on him on the switch. Tony, the teardrop, no, rebound to Paul. They're just picking on Hilton Armstrong tonight. First Manu slams over the top of him. Tony trying to wear him out on the perimeter. Paul, no stop. At this point, you actually want Paul passing, don't you? Absolutely. You got to make somebody else beat you. Double team him. Make Stoyakovich make a shot or, or Armstrong. Make Posey knock down a shot. That's a season high for Chris Paul with 36. 
And a foul is called here, an offensive foul on Kurt Thomas, and that is his fifth now with 3.12 to go. And Chris Paul bringing it up. They're down 10. Well, go ahead and give James Posey his Oscar. Yeah, he did some selling. Now he looked like he got shot there. Paul again for three. Wow. Follows everything but down. Oh, I thought it was good. Parker got by Paul. They give good help, and now Manu on the drive. Lays it up and in. Nice little spin from Manu. Get over <laughs> Amano just sees the hole in the defense instead of going with his right hand. The hole clears up. He's able to get an easy layup with his left. Well, the Spurs have hit that magic century mark. They're 15 and 0 when they hit 100 or more. Manu putting them over here. Oh, uh, doing what he does best, and that's making lemonade. Manu Ginobili, the king of broken plays, making something happen for the Spurs. 22 for Manu. 101-89, Spurs leading here by a dozen, 2.35 to go. Hey, folks, want to remind you to make your way out to the KISS FM Road Warrior Party. It'll be at Hooligan's Bar and Grill, located at 1604 and 35 North. That'll be Sunday, February 8th at noon. Watch the Spurs and the Boston Celtics for their first meeting this season. Get there early, join the Spurs, Coyote, and folks from 99.5 KISS to register for a chance to win Spurs tickets, CDs, and other great prizes. The Spurs going on the rodeo road trip after tonight for eight straight on the road. Trying to finish off the pesky Hornets here. And tonight, they've done a great job of sharing the basketball. And hopefully it's enough to overcome a season best effort from Chris Paul. With that bucket, he has 38 now. His career high is 43. Oh, he's been phenomenal. And you and I were talking during the break. You know, why do you take a guy out in that situation when he's on fire? I've never been in a zone and gotten tired. It's impossible. Yeah. The Spurs have had 24 assists to 10 for New Orleans because it's just basically been Chris Paul, a little bit of David West, but Chris Paul creating most, if not all, of his on his own. He's creating all the points for his teammates also. He just does absolutely everything. And again, he's been forced to score the basketball more. David West coming back after five games with back spasms playing last night and of course no Tyson Chandler Chris Paul has to score the basketball Parker answers with a perimeter jumper of his own let's not forget our old all-star 22 points on 11 of 17 shooting seven assists Paul the oop Armstrong out of bounds Spurs basketball that's the point you'd rather him alley-oop at this point uh, than him thank shoot. you yeah make somebody else beat you Parker Beats him down the floor as they were all moaning and groaning. <laughs> Tony Parker is driving and scoring. That's exactly right. They're sulking about a no call. They thought the ball should have gone their way. Instead, they're walking down the court. Tony Parker, beautiful hesitation move on West. The and one, thank you very much. And again, we talk about the maturity level of the New Orleans Hornets complaining about lack of calls, cost them Two, possibly three points here down the stretch in the guts of the ball game. 105 91. So Parker at the line as Bonner comes in for Kurt Thomas. And Bonner, a big part of the Spurs' success tonight with 13 points on five of five shooting. Here is Parker with 25 now. Tony, how about the last three games? 25 tonight, 26 against Phoenix, 24 against Utah. Chris Paul, 69 in his last two games. <laughs> and trying to give it a 40-point night with a miss there. He stays at 38. Uh, I don't know. You know, I hate to second-guess coaches, especially the opposing coaches, but I probably would have kept him in there that entire fourth quarter. He was on such a roll. You take him out of the ball game, their offense suffers a little bit. But the way he was shooting the basketball, creating shots, left him in there and just told him to win the ball game. Matt Bonner called for the travel. Matt's going, didn't I release the ball on the dribble first? Doesn't get the call on this one. Subs are coming on, though, as the Spurs 
in their last home game until February 24th when the Dallas Mavericks come calling. And by the way, they did beat Miami tonight. Spurs will be on the road for eight straight. Chris Paul leaves with a season high. Parker and Ginobili get a well-deserved breather for the final 109. Tony with 25, Miami with 22. Tim had 12 points, eight boards, seven assists. The Spurs got 20 from Finley. This is a big win here. It's your last home game before you go off on a long road trip. You just come back from a three-game road trip where you had to win two crucial games against the Utah Jazz and the Phoenix Suns, especially the way you played in the second half against L.A. These guys have the taste in their mouths right now. They should have a pretty good trip. Udoka now down low, Bonner. And the football go comes off to Julian Wright. Wright averaging three points, couple boards a game. Second year player in Just trouble. And Harrison with the block. How about that? From Austin to San Antonio and picking up where he left off with the Toros. Show some athletic ability. Malik Harrison. Uh, Wright's not a little guy. Trying to shoot a fadeaway on the top of Harrison. And George Hill winding the clock down. Eight on the shot clock, 13 overall. The Spurs get a nice hand from the great following here tonight. George Hill, shot clock expired before the layup. And that'll do it as 106-93. Hornets win bounds with 4.9 to go. And they'll suffer back-to-back -back losses. The Spurs will bump it to 32 and 14, winning their third straight. And give them a three game lead over the Hornets now in the Southwest Division. Very impressive indeed by the San Antonio Spurs tonight. Finley 20, Tony Parker with 25, head for the locker room. And Antonio Daniels, a word from Greg Popovich for the former Spur. And I don't know why they're doing all this chatting. They're going to see each other in a couple weeks in Phoenix anyways. That's right. Both All-Stars. Hey, the Spurs have brought home another W. Each month, Whataburger and the Spurs giving away a pair of Spurs tickets and Whataburger delivered to your seats. Simply log on to Spurs.com and enter the promo code WHATAWIN to register for your chance to bring home the W. One lucky Spurs fan will bring home the ultimate W by winning Whataburger for a year, four tickets to a game, and a Spurs jersey. Log on to Spurs.com for all the details. We'll take a break. We'll be back to visit about this one with the Spurs. A 13-point winner over New Orleans, 106-93.